Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. This F-15E is participating in a U.S. Air Force weapons school exercise over the Nevada desert. Specifically, this pilot is engaging in dogfighting training, along with other pilots from their wing. Dogfighting is the name given to close-range air-to-air combat between two or more aircraft. Dogfighting was introduced almost immediately after aircraft were adopted by the military, but it has evolved constantly over the years. Modern pilots still train extensively in air combat maneuvering and basic fighter maneuvers, as it is essential that they know how to engage with air-to-air -air threats in a wide variety of scenarios. This current exercise involves the use of flare countermeasures to avoid attacks using infrared homing missiles, also known as heat-seeking missiles. The flares burn hot and bright for a short time in order to redirect the missile from the aircraft's engines. U.S. Air Force pilots undergo extensive combat training in order to ensure mission readiness. Since the 1970s, many have participated in what's known as dissimilar air combat training, or DACT. This is when two aircraft of very different design and capabilities participate in dogfighting scenarios. This is crucial to modern air warfare, as even the most advanced militaries still use aircraft that are 40, 50, and even 60 years old. During a DACT exercise, F-22s and F-35s may compete against F-16s, 15s, and many other older aircraft. These exercises are also common among allies, as they allow pilots to familiarize themselves with entirely new approaches to combating aircraft and the different aircraft types. Even in the early days of aerial combat, pilots knew that threats were not only confined to the air. On top of that, many missions call upon aircraft to destroy ground targets, whether they represent an aerial threat or not. This air-to-ground attack is known as strafing, and Air Force pilots frequently perform test runs to prepare themselves for the real thing. During a strafing run, pilots are required to fly at a relatively low altitude while maintaining high speeds. They can then use guns, rockets, or bombs to attack slow-moving or stationary targets. Here, you can see United States Marine Corps F-35Bs dropping simulated ordnance atop target structures in Mountain Home Air Force Base. A 
Of course, there are times when real weapons are used to further improve and enhance training. Here, pilots from Spain and the Czech Republic participate in a live fire exercise over Polygono Ganadero weapons range. The aircraft use their high-powered cannons to attack ground targets with frightening accuracy. As they perform a strafing run one after the other, they prepare themselves more and more for the real thing. In recent years, preparing for the real thing has gotten easier than ever. This is largely due to advancements in simulator technology. Flight simulators like this one for the F-35 are a great way to showcase the capabilities of an aircraft in a safe and controlled environment. This is especially important for a high advanced fighter jet like the F-35, which is a big step forward in technology from older aircraft. It's also an important tool for training inexperienced pilots without putting them inside a real F-35. These full cockpit simulators are surrounded by large digital screens that further increase immersion. This makes it much easier for pilots to familiarize themselves with how the F-35 handles. After simulator training, pilots will undergo further training inside a real F-35 Lightning II. This takes place at the F-35 Academic Training Center at Luke Air Force Base in Arizona. Here, missions are completed every day, but pilots also participate in in-class learning and the use of scaled-down desktop simulators. Luke Air Force Base also has 12 full-size simulator bays, all of which are even more advanced than the preliminary version seen before. The U.S. Air Force believes that all of this preparation will result in pilots that are truly ready to take on any challenge. The United States Air Force has always put an immense amount of focus on training realism. Perhaps nothing is more indicative of this fact than the QF-4 program. This is a fighter drone program developed in the 1990s. The goal was to create full-scale, fully operational aerial targets using refitted F-4 Phantoms, the principal fighter aircraft used during the Vietnam War. These drones are able to simulate enemy aircraft maneuvers during live fire exercises. Controlled by a pilot operating on the ground, these drones make for perfect missile targets. Good, Mark. Drone is destroyed in half. However, for added safety, they are also fitted with a self-destruct device in the event the remote pilot loses control. In 2013, the U.S. Air Force decided they needed a faster, more agile target for their QF program. This resulted in the refitting of an F-16 Fighting Falcon, which is set to become the new target drone.
Though many F-16s are still in service, the Air Force intends to phase these out in the coming years to make room for more advanced aircraft. Of course, not all of the Air Force's older planes are being retired and replaced. One of the most successful attack aircraft in history is the A-10 Thunderbolt, which the Air Force intends to keep in service until 2040, despite being introduced in 1977. As you can see in this footage from Kandahar, Afghanistan, the A-10 is armed to the teeth with rockets, guns, missiles, bombs, and more. In all, the aircraft boasts 11 hardpoints upon which weapons of various types can be mounted. The A-10 also boasts a 30mm rotary cannon under the nose. This is capable of firing up to 1,350 rounds during a single mission. While not particularly fast, the Thunderbolt is a formidable opponent when it comes to strafing attacks and air-to-air -air combat. Here, you can see the A-10 doing what it does best, destroying multiple ground targets at once. The cannon is capable of firing very quickly, perforating ground targets with 30 mm rounds. Advanced weapon systems have also increased the accuracy of bombing runs, which are capable of decimating enemy tanks and other armored vehicles. Despite its age, it's clear that the A-10 is well equipped to deal with modern threats, whether from the land, the air, or the sea. From simulator training to live fire exercises like this, the U.S. Air Force is utterly committed to preparing its pilots and planes to dominate the combat zone. From formidable dinosaurs like the A-10 to sleek new fighter jets like the F-35, there's little question that these aircraft can do just that. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.